The humanitarian effort has actually done quite a bit. But what happened was, I think since about May of last year, um, the security has seriously deteriorated, especially from September onwards. And what you're seeing is you kind of take, you know, one step forward and two steps back. Um, so I think we're really looking at a situation where security is going to worsen, um, the amount of people in need is going to increase, and we're going to look at almost the same situation as when it first started. Because of insecurity, we're no longer able to get to all the areas. Uh, and there are a considerable number of people that are cut off. Because of fighting, another quarter of a million people were displaced in the last six months alone. We still see thousands of people every day that are being displaced. We also have people coming in from Chad. Um, although we did make great strides in the past couple of years, um, just because of decreasing security, we're just seeing that whole cycle just start again. But over the last few months, things have gotten worse. We have less access. There's been more attacks on humanitarian workers. And while we've been able to make that difference, we've been able to lower malnutrition levels, we've been able to lower mortality levels. Um, if these attacks continue, if the displacements continue, if the fighting doesn't stop, we're not going to be able to hold the line indefinitely. With violent attacks on the rise once again, not only are the lives of innocent Darfurians at risk, but the safety of the humanitarian workers is also in jeopardy. In the last six months, we've lost 12 colleagues. The humanitarian community has lost 12 colleagues. Despite the very real risk to their lives, the humanitarian community refuses to give up on Darfur. Yes, we, we are a little bit scared when we came. But now, when, when we came in and we did the, our job and we see how we, we, we are supporting those people, how those people are really in, de in need for us, then uh, other things can be like minor things for us because now it's a kind of satisfaction that we got from our job here. For me, I think it gives me satisfaction, I mean, to be there and to help, I mean, to really uh, alleviate the human misery is very satisfying. I mean, uh, both as a professional person and as a human being. There is no doubt of humanitarian workers' commitment to save Darfur. But without a practical solution to the instability that has plagued the region, the future could be grim. What we need is a political solution. There are efforts on the way by the uh, special envoy of the Secretary General for Darfur, Yan Eliasson, and his counterpart from the African Union, Salim Salim, to restart the political process. We need to give them the full backing in order that they succeed. That peace process was to lead to the Darfur peace agreement between the SLA and Jem rebel groups and the government. However, only one faction, the SLA Mini Manawi, signed in May 2006. Being satisfied. After the talks broke off, the rebels splintered from two groups into eight groups with 19 separate commands, making a peace settlement increasingly difficult. The worst fear of humanitarian organizations is further atomization of the rebels into uncontrolled groups of armed bandits. U.S. State Department officials say the Darfur peace agreement is still the best hope for a solution. The International Crisis Group also calls for revitalization of the peace process and pressure to bring all sides back to the table and abandon attempts to win a military victory. We cannot give up on Darfur. There are just too many people that are affected, and there's still the possibility of a resolution that needs to be pursued. With a never-failing hope for a resolution to the violence, some NGOs have been successful in working with groups that also seek an end to the chaos and fighting. 30 miles east of Al Fasher, the capital of northern Darfur, lies the village of Sagal Nam, deep in the heart of SLA territory. The community lives under the control of the Mini Manawi faction of the SLA, one rebel group that has signed the Darfur peace agreement. Because of their commitment to end the fighting, 
the community became accessible to UNICEF earlier this year. In the short time they've been involved in the area, UNICEF, along with the help of community leaders, has made great strides. Together, they provide humanitarian assistance to the vulnerable populations of the village in the areas of health, water, and basic education. This is a key rebel-held village. It's held by the SLA. Key point here is that there's road of peace and security here. UNICEF has brought us to see the work that they're doing here in these schools. Assalamu alaikum. Marhaba. Masal khair. How are you? Prior to signing the peace agreement, this village was under regular attack. Now with the treaty in place, children are back in school, eager to catch up on what they missed. Medina Asimat, Sudan. Khatoum. America? Asimat, America? Washington. It's a pretty smart classroom here. We've gone over the uh, capitals here. Masmuka. Masmuki. And it's not just the students who are happy to be back in school. Thank you very much. We are uh, in peace now. Right. We are, uh, so you know, no. No, no war. No war. Uh, the S, uh, the S, the S, and M uh, protect us from the attack of the helicopters. Now we are uh, confirmed and suitable. So what he's saying is that the SLA has actually made a peace agreement with the government here, and because of that, there are no attacks. Everybody is at peace, yes. and you now have everybody happy and healthy and back in school again. Yes. Can all of Darfur be like this, do you think? Well, I hope that Darfur, all Darfur will live in peace, but some places, till now there is no peace. I hope all, uh, all uh, places in Darfur will live in peace. Okay? Thank you very much. Bye-bye. As we leave the school, the SLA rebel commander in charge of governing the village stops us to talk. Ah, it's me, Bob. That's right. There. So Mohammed here is a key SLA commander for this village and uh, has come here to the school to uh, visit with. So, is there peace now for the people of Saginaw? Amen Kulashkasfil Saginaw. Yes, in Sagalnam, we finally have peace. I'd like to know if UNICEF is helping you here now in this village. I'm very happy from UNICEF to diseases, uh, classes, and, and water, and things. The water source the commander mentions is key to survival in this barren land. Without fresh water, this village would cease to exist. Thanks to UNICEF, Sagal Nam now has its own borehole. <laughs>